Welcome back. 
In this tutorial, we'll look at using animations and effects to engage our viewers. For example, zooming to show detail, panning to reveal more information, or speeding up a section of video to keep the viewer focused. Let's start with animations. Animations are added to the timeline by clicking and dragging. Clips highlight showing where they can be applied. Animations display as arrows and can be made longer to increase their duration, dragged to be repositioned, or copied to another location or media clip. To delete an animation, select the animation and press delete. To animate the media, select the clip, make sure the playhead is past the end of the arrow, then change the clip's properties, such as its size and position which can be done on the canvas or in the properties panel. Basically, whatever you do to the media after the animation arrow, Camtasia remembers and plays back during the animation. Notice that the properties before the animation remain the same. Camtasia can animate any visual property, including size, opacity, color, rotation, and more. In this project, I show how to log into a website but it's a bit tough to see what's happening. I'll add an animation. Then zoom in and center the clip on the canvas. If I increase the size too much, the clip becomes blurry. To fine tune the placement and length of the animation, zoom in on the timeline to show more detail. To fit your project back to the timeline and see it in full, click the magnifying glass. If we continue on, you'll notice how the animation only affects the clip it's placed on. For this next part, I'll start with my clip zoomed in to focus the viewer's attention on dragging a file to Google. To emphasize the dragging, I'll add an animation, move the playhead after the animation arrow, and change the position of the media to follow my actions on the screen. Now I'll add a final animation to zoom back out and show the video in full. I can use the reset buttons to return my clip to its initial size and position. Along with animations, effects can help us improve our video by speeding up clips, adding interactivity, and even removing or changing the colors of a video. Effects are added like animations by dragging them to the timeline. However, they apply to an entire clip. For example, this part of my recording really drags as the video is uploading to the website. So let's speed it up. Start by splitting the video and audio in the area before and after, then drag the effect to the clip. Since there isn't any audio during this, I'll delete it so I can focus on the video. Once applied, edit the effect in the effects tray by dragging the handles. Notice that the clip becomes shorter as the speed increases. This is helpful when trying to perfect the length of a clip. You can also adjust the speed and duration in the properties panel. This is looking a lot better. To finish, Select all of the media and move it left. You can move all of the objects on the same track that are to the right of a clip by holding the shift key. Let's give it a look. These effects and animations definitely keep the focus on what I want my viewers to see. Be sure to check out our next tutorial on editing audio in Camtasia. Thanks for watching. Welcome back! In this tutorial, I'll focus on editing audio and adding background music to spice things up a bit. Before we start, it's good to point out that audio behaves just like video in Camtasia. You can drag, copy, cut, 
trim, split clips, and even add effects. Let's check it out. In our project, we have two audio tracks. The first is the microphone audio, and the second is the system audio, which is joined together with the screen video. If you want to edit or remove the system audio, right-click the clip and select Separate Audio and Video. This will make the system audio its own piece of media on a track. I'll delete it since I don't need it for this project. Displayed across each audio track in the timeline is a waveform. This is a visual representation of the sounds that were recorded and it allows us to quickly see changes in volume. For example, I can see that I started speaking here while this part of my video is silent. Expand the track up to get a better look. You may have also noticed that when an audio clip is selected, this line appears. Drag it up and down to adjust the volume. Each clip has its own audio line, which can be adjusted separately. To change the volume for only part of a clip, such as fading in or out, use audio points. To add an audio point, double-click or right-click on the audio line. Then, add a second audio point and drag to adjust the volume. Camtasia automatically adjusts the volume from one point to the next. Let's practice by adding that background music track. To add additional media to a project, choose File, Import Media. Then drag the file from the media bin to the timeline. Let's test it out. Hi everyone, this is a quick tutorial. Wow, the music is way too loud and makes my narration hard to hear. It also doesn't start playing until a few seconds into the clip. Let's start with getting the music to play right at the beginning. Zoom in on the audio track to see more detail. Trim the clip then move it over. Perfect. Now let's look at the big problem. How to make the music softer while I'm speaking, yet nice and loud at the beginning. To start, add audio points where you want to adjust the volume, then click and drag. Hi everyone, this is a quick tutorial. If you want to play only one audio track at a time, click this icon to temporarily disable or re-enable a track. Now let's jump to the end of the project and remove the extra music by splitting the clip and deleting. Hmm, that was a bit too much. The great thing about editing with Camtasia is we can always untrim media by simply extending the clip back out. To fade the music at the end, add audio points, or have Camtasia automatically add them by choosing Audio Effects and dragging Fade Out to the clip. Thanks for watching. Perfect. Be sure to check out our next tutorial on producing and sharing your video. Thanks for watching. Welcome back! Hopefully you're feeling pretty confident recording and editing video in Camtasia. Before we wrap up the Getting Started series, I'll quickly go over producing a project as a file on your computer. Then look at two other important topics, archiving your project files and sharing a project with another Camtasia user. To get started with producing a video, click the Share button and choose Local File. This will produce the project as a video on your computer. On Windows, the production wizard opens, with settings already optimized for your project. Use these at first, and later, go back and explore some of the more advanced options. When ready, click Next. Modify the name, choose where you'd like to save your video, then click Finish. Camtasia produces your video as an MP4 and opens it so you can preview the finished product. If you're on a Mac, Click Share, Local File. Give your video a name, 
Choose where you'd like to save your video, then click Export. Camtasia produces your video, and when production is complete, click Reveal in Finder to open the folder where your video is saved. Congratulations! You can now record, edit, and share video using Camtasia. Now that we're finished, let's look at archiving project files and sharing with another Camtasia user. To archive a project in Camtasia, choose File, Export a Zip. This process zips your entire project into one file. Inside the zipped folder is the project file, which ends in .tscproj, the screen recordings, which end in .trec and can only be opened by Camtasia, and any other media used in the project. To share a project with another Camtasia user, simply send them this zip file. To share a project with a person using a different operating system, choose File, Export 4, then pick your platform. For example, on Windows, choose File, Export for Mac. This creates a zipped project file that can be opened on either platform. It's good to note that a few kinds of media and effects are not fully supported on both platforms. And during the export process, a dialog box will appear detailing any unsupported features. If you receive a zipped project file, import the project by choosing File, Import Zipped Project. Then, navigate to the project and click Open. Lastly, provide a name and a location of where you'd like to save the project, then click OK. This dialog once again appears, detailing any unsupported features. The project then opens in Camtasia and is ready to use. That's all for the Getting Started series, and if you're looking to do more, check out our advanced tutorials. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the Getting Started series for Camtasia. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the basics of recording your screen, then editing and sharing your video. Before we start, keep in mind that creating a high-quality video is all about the prep work. I recommend you do these three things before you press the record button. First, create a simple storyboard of what you'll be recording. This helps you stay focused and on track. Second, write a script so you know exactly what to say and when to say it. Third, decide where you want to share your video. You can save to your hard drive or to popular destinations like YouTube or Google Drive. For this video, I'm going to record, edit, then share to YouTube. Let's get started. Right now, you're in the Camtasia editor. The editor is made up of the timeline where you can arrange and edit your clips, the tools panel where your media is stored along with shapes, animations, effects, and more, the canvas where you can move, resize, position, and preview your media, and the properties panel where you can fine tune your media and effects. To start a recording, click the record button at the top of the tools panel, which opens the Camtasia recorder. By default, the recorder is set to capture everything that happens on your screen. To customize the capture settings, choose the custom button to change the recording area, the camera button to enable webcam recording, and the audio button to choose what audio is recorded. If you're on a Mac, use the toggle buttons to enable screen recording, webcam, microphone, and the system audio. Use the arrows next to each to customize the capture. Keep in mind that once recording begins, you cannot change the recording size or its location on the screen. Now that everything's ready, click record. Hi everyone, this is a quick tutorial on how to use Google Drive to upload a file and copy the link and send it to anyone that needs the file. Thanks for watching. When you're finished recording, click the Camtasia recorder icon, then the stop button. If you're not happy with your recording, choose delete to try again. If you're on a Mac, 
Click the Camtasia icon in the Apple menu bar, then click Stop. The capture automatically appears in the Media Bin, on the Canvas, and on the Timeline, where the top track is Microphone Audio, and the bottom track is Screen Video and System Audio. System Audio are the sounds that come from your computer. To preview a video, hit the Play button or press the Space bar. Jump to a location by clicking on the Timeline, and scrub over the timeline by dragging the playhead. If there's a mistake in the recording, remove it by dragging the end of the clip in. This is called trimming. If you trim too much, drag the clip back to restore your video. If the mistake is in the middle, drag a handle on the playhead and click to remove the section. There will be a stitched line showing you where the media was removed. If you make a selection and want to bring the playhead back together, double-click the playhead. To get a better look at your recording, use the zoom slider to zoom in on the timeline. It's good to note that any edits you make on the timeline won't affect your original recording in the media bin. This means you can undo your edits, or even start again by dragging your recording back to the timeline. Let's click Undo to remove that. To add additional media, annotations, or other objects, drag them from the Tools panel to the Timeline. When finished, save the project. The first time you save, this dialog will pop up with some important tips about projects in Camtasia. Now, click the Share button, choose YouTube, sign in, give Camtasia permission to post to YouTube, and share your video. Done! Be sure to check out our next tutorial on improving your video with transitions, annotations, and behaviors. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to the Getting Started series. In this tutorial, we'll take the project a step further by adding annotations for use as titles and callouts, transitions to improve the flow of our video, and behaviors to engage our viewers with eye-catching animations. Before we start, let's quickly look at how videos are made in Camtasia. Videos are created on the timeline, moving sequentially from left to right. Each timeline track is a layer and media can be moved and repositioned between tracks by clicking and dragging, where the topmost track is completely visible and the bottom tracks can be hidden by those above. Everything at the point of the playhead is displayed on the canvas. The canvas is the working area, where you arrange, rotate, resize, and even reorder content. Think of it as a blank sheet of paper that you build your project on. It spans the entire project and everything on the canvas will be produced in the final video. The canvas color can be customized and you can zoom in or out to get a better look at your work. Layers are automatically created by dragging media to the timeline or to the canvas. Now that we have a basic idea of how videos are created, Let's jump to the project for an example. I'll add a title to the project by selecting a text annotation and dragging it to the timeline. The annotation appears over top of the video since it is on the highest track. Double click the annotation to add text, use the handles to change its size, and click and drag to reposition. Since titles are easier to read when they're on top of a solid color, I'm going to select all the media on the timeline and move it to the right. This creates a blank timeline space where the color of the canvas shows through. I can use this space for a title slide. To customize the look and feel of the annotation, select it. Then change its font, 
background color, and more in the properties panel. Press play to preview the title, or move the playhead and press the spacebar. Hmm. The jump from the title to the recording is a bit harsh. Let's smooth it out by adding a transition, which can be done by dragging it to the timeline. Clips on the timeline highlight to show where the transition can be applied. And where two pieces of media touch each other, the transition is automatically applied to the end of the first and the beginning of the second. To change the duration of the transition, click and drag the ends. To delete a transition, click the transition and press delete. This is looking pretty good. Let's take it a step further and bring the text to life by adding a behavior. Behaviors can be applied to all visual objects on the timeline. Simply drag the behavior to the annotation and watch what happens. Nice. Customize how the behavior enters the canvas, what it does when it's on the canvas, and how it leaves by adjusting its properties in the Properties panel. If you want to delete the behavior, click the X. I'll go more in depth into everything you can do with behaviors in a later tutorial. Now that the beginning of the video is finished, let's add another title to the middle. Move the playhead to where you want to add the callout. Select the media and split the clips by pressing the split button or using the S key on Windows and Command T on Mac. Then select all of the media after the split and move it to the right. We could copy and paste our original title if we wanted them all to look the same. However, I want to try something new. I'll choose this one and drag it directly to the canvas then change its text. Notice that the callout is added to the timeline exactly where the playhead is located. Reposition and resize it to fit into the space we created. Let's also change the size and color to match the theme. Then add a behavior to make it come alive. I'll choose pop-up. Lastly, add a transition to both ends of the annotation at the same time by dragging it to the middle of the clip. This is looking nice. To finish, I'll add one more annotation that points out a key piece of information that I want the viewer to know. I'll use an arrow, rotate it by clicking and dragging the rotate handle, then add text. Next, I'll change its size, color, and position. Then add a behavior to grab attention. Lastly, change the behavior to make it slide in from the right. Perfect. Try adding a few more titles throughout the video, and be sure to check out the next tutorial on improving your video with animations and effects. Thanks for watching. When I talk to, to my friends and family, I tell them that we're like a West Coast tech company in the middle of the Midwest. TechSmith is a software company that makes solutions and products that help anyone communicate. Through visuals, through video, we are about advancing communication and, and being on the bleeding edge of what new communication means. We really care about how people see us how people use our products, and we really focus on our customers. That's everything that we do. It's not just about creating a great product, but how our customers are using it and making them successful. You can use 
Texman products on pretty much any device you can think of. You can use it on your Mac, your PC, you can view things on your phone. Our products, for the most part, are helping to transfer what's inside these walls here into the walls of your brain and doing that with Rich Media. And how do we apply that into a really engaging way of people not just hearing the information, but remembering it? Because that's the key part. If they don't remember it, then the medium is, is, is not as effective as it needs to be. We have a lot of customers in education, so teachers, trainers, people like that. We also have people who work in business, like those who work in sales or marketing, such as myself, people who work in IT, help desk, um, lots of different people who also use our products um, in their home life. So more things for personal use or not necessarily work related. Our company is located all in Okemos, Michigan, and we have five different buildings, so it's this really cool campus, fun to walk around in the summer, a little cold in the winter, but good to get outside. We've got all our teams in their buildings, and then we also have our company is very small, so you know pretty well. Instead of having to call somebody from a different department or calling a tech support person who might be in a different country, you can literally just go across the street or across the parking lot and meet with that person face to face to resolve whatever issue you might be having. And other products would be in different buildings on what that product is and where the team thought they should be organized. But for the most part, it's a get up and walk over and uh, talk to the person. Well, despite the fact that it is uh, a corporation, it doesn't feel that important, at least uh, not to my taste. A brand new employee, even an intern who walk into the president's office or any executive's office, you can share an idea or um, talk about their day. You know, it's very, very open door around here. Because that respect for people, respect for open ideas and creative thinking, it makes it a fun place to work. It makes it not feel like a job. I can talk to any other team that work for that matter and see from the ground up what they do and why they do. Very social atmosphere, which I really appreciate, um, and it definitely helps, it helps encourage me to do my work better, but also to make friends at work, which I think is important since I spent a lot of time here. <laughs>We have an adage in our hiring process that can be a supervisor, not a great fit for tax health. And I think that's true and fair of all the employees here is that we can all each other. I don't think I've met a single person that I wouldn't say is really nice and kind and willing to help. But it's more than that. It's not that they're just kind to you, but they're willing to be honest with you. They're willing to support you in your work. They're, they're passionate. They really encourage you to branch out, get to know people, see what kind of career you'd like to fit in at. I will admit I didn't know a lot about that before I got here. But when I came and I met everybody, got to walk around the facility, got to meet some of the managers, got to basically just see where and with whom I'd be working. I was sold. I mean, it's just a good, friendly place. We know that we are a successful company because of the employees that we have and because they are able to create these products that people love and these solutions that really help out in, uh, in our customers' lives. That, you know, Texas is not the kind of place that takes any of that for granted. They know we're here because of our employees and customers. You know, a lot of companies talk about, we care about our users, we care about our people, our team, but I never really understood that until I came here, because you could really feel it. We're all coming here because we're excited to work with other people, also as passionate as smart as we are. My favorite part of my working here is that I wake up every morning and say, TechSmith is not a big bureaucratic organization. It's not your stereotypical business. 
It's one office of 250 employees that all care a lot and all make a huge impact. We do mobile development, Android development, Mac Windows, um, even some web browser apps on Chrome. You can feel it almost right away that the decisions that you're making are impacting customers immediately. It's, it's a great feeling to, to work on products that people view. Personality traits of a general textbook employee is someone who is talented and passionate about what they do. Willing to interact with others, raise questions, raise concerns, be curious. Very friendly. Um, very open and honest and direct. You'll find it very easy to have an opinion, offer feedback. I can talk to anyone about the company and I never feel nervous about like, what they were going to say back to me or like be like, oh, I don't have time for you right now. So having the, the curiosity to question everything this I think, makes for a really interesting workplace. It feels very West Coast-ish here, basically. And just being close to the capital, and it opens itself. What does it do? Restaurants, bars, school events. Every single month, there's an activity. It might be family. We had a Magic the Gathering card tournament the other day, like a month ago or so, it was two months ago. There's textbook basketball, there's textbook soccer, there's textbook dodgeball, textbook softball, it just goes on and on. There are tons of opportunities. Textbook is not the place where you're going to be like, year for year, and be like, oh, this, I hate this, and I don't get to do what I want. There is a big focus on your interests and what you want to do, and there's all kinds of good conferences that cover just like, hey, Microsoft wants to drink the Kool-Aid, so check it out, to like, this was just stuff on testing and unit testing and do that. And then we have our own internal develop conference just to teach each other how to do stuff. Each team functions kind of as its own entity in a way. They make decisions on how they're going to develop what works for them as a team to get their job done. Everyone's really great at giving feedback. Also, um, through different tools we use, people are always commenting on Code, suggesting improvements, different ways to help you as a developer learn. That's the common thing is everybody's you know, easy to work with, easy to get along with. You can grow, you're going to help TechSmith grow. If you're going to be successful, you're going to help TechSmith be successful. And it's kind of a win win. The onboarding process here is, is already remarkable. TechSmith is awesome to see and how flexible. Hardware choices, my software choices. I got this really powerful ThinkPad, good for gaming, really good for developing. I can have like four instances of Visual Studios open, um, debugging. It's it's fantastic. I was also interested in doing Mac code, so then now I have a Mac laptop I can use as well. I have both a PC and a and a Mac for my role, but you know you just get what's in, what's available for you at your you know what you what you need. Uh, Text will, will support you. You know, I've really been impressed in almost every way. Almost everything I'm looking for is here. The fun, flexible programming environment, the extreme knowledge of the people I'm working with. If you're planning on living in this area, there's not a better company that I know of that is going to have the type of culture, that give you access, um, give you that sense of accomplishment of actually creating something. It feels like they're so invested in their employees. They want them to be the best they can be. And give them the time to do that and the resources. If you really wanted to define your own path with the help of a very caring organization, you should consider that. There's so many great benefits to working here and especially if you want to stay in Michigan. I can't think of a better place in Michigan to work. <laughs>
I can talk to anybody about anything really we all uh, have something in common, usually games or something nerdy, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool.